Hi everyone, a quick uh, hint for those of you doing the extended range tanks. If you put in the uh, optional outboard sender, <clears throat> it actually mounts right here to the rear of the baffle. So it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, do all the adjustments for the float looking through the uh, fuel cap opening. One of the things you could do, I think, is leave off this end rib. That would make it easier. But since I didn't do that, because the plan said go ahead and rivet this on, what I did was make a quick template here that kind of simulates the rear spar, but it leaves this bay open for me to see it. And so I was able to get in there now and bend the float so it works properly. Otherwise, it's going to be a real hassle to try and figure out how to bend that float. At the root rib, it's much easier because the float actually uh, uh, attaches to the rib. So you can look down in it without the rear baffle on and make the adjustments. So this one was a little more interesting to do, but uh, hopefully that might help some of you. It had me puzzled for a bit. And uh, again, I think I, when I do the other tank, I might just leave this rib off uh, when I do it. So here we're gonna show you how we mix up the Pro Seal in these Flame Master cartridges. You can get this little tool here off of Amazon and it just goes in your drill and it makes mixing up these cartridges really easy. I count 60 strokes each time I'm doing it. I've got the drill spinning slowly and uh, basically what you do is a plunger comes with these things and you have to push the catalyst down into the cartridge then remove it and then just attach your tool to it and you got to spin it clockwise. If you spin it counterclockwise, it's going to disconnect, and uh, that's what you do at the end, actually. So this does a really good job of mixing up the sealant. It's very consistent when it comes out, and it certainly is a whole lot easier than doing it by hand. Using a rivet squeezer along the rear baffle really makes it go quite fast, and all the rivets are set uniformly, and it's a whole lot less messy than using a uh, bucking bar and a rivet gun. Hi, everyone, and Happy New Year! Don't know what all of you did yesterday, but Carol and I started our new year by final riveting of the left extended range fuel tank. So we got it all done yesterday. That was pretty exciting. You can see how large these tanks are. Uh, the final step actually was riveting the baffling, the rear baffle, and all of the Z brackets. So they are in place now. And uh, overnight, you'll, I'll show you, I had this setting, you know, set on its laying down. So hopefully we got some gravity work of the uh, sealant to lay against the inside of the baffle here to seal the edge. One of the tricks I recommend here you might consider doing is I always add a ground wire to the sender. Yeah, the sender should pick up the ground through the screws and everything, but by adding this ground wire, I've always had really accurate uh, and unwavering fuel quantity indications from these senders. So I've added a ground wire here just pick it up on one of the screws, and I've also added a ground wire on the other sender that's at the root side. So this is all done, and I'll show you overnight. I'm going to put it back down the way it was, because this stuff flows out for a couple of days, actually. And uh, so I just kind of had it laying on the ground like this. And it's a nice, cool time of the year, so hopefully uh, the sealant will flow out there for a while. So we'll probably leak check it in a couple of days and give you the results of that. In the meantime, we should get the other one finished. You know, there's been some comments made about how fast we get these done. I want to assure you there's a lot of work that goes on here, and a lot of it is just organization. So let's walk into the shop here, and I'm going to show you what I mean by organization. I believe one of the things that helps when you're actually tackling a project that's so complex as wet riveting uh, fuel tanks is some organization ahead of time. That just makes the process go much better. I just thought I'd share with you mine. So you can see all the tools that we'll need here while we're doing, you know, we're going to start on the ribs now on the inside of the fuel tank. So basically the idea is to spread some sealant along the edge here and then put it inside, clico it. We'll clico it about every other hole. And where the holes are tighter, we might go two holes just to allow room for the mushroom head on the rivet gun. So you want to get all your tools lined up here. We've got the rivet gun we're going to use, a couple of different bucking bars, okay? Some ear protection. It gets really loud riveting, especially the echoes from inside the fuel tank here. We've got our clico set up. We've got the rivet set up. 
Uh, we've got an awl. As you're putting the ribs in, it helps to have this to actually line up those rib holes and then get your first set of Clicos going. We've got a couple set of Clico pliers, and then we'll stage our glue here. Usually to do the wing, uh, we'll mix up about 20 grams of, of the Pro Seal, and it gets us about two ribs. So we're going to do eight ribs. So we've got four cups here. What we'll do is we'll pre-stage these with some Pro Seal without the hardener in it, and then they'll be ready to mix up and go. So we move along pretty quickly once we get the process started. Um, and the other thing you'll want to have is some acetone, paper towels, lots of gloves. <laughs> we'll go through maybe a half a box of gloves while we're doing this. And uh, you can see it's all staged. We put the uh, fuel tank here over the edge of the table. We've got it clamped in the jig, and then we can walk around and get each rib. We'll move this down as we're working this half and then turn it around and swing it down so we can very quickly get access to either side of the fuel tank. So anyway, just some hints for you. I hope that works. And I see our bucket of uh, Clicos that was yesterday full of Yes. Pro seal. Yeah, these are all full of Pro Seal. You're going to get a lot of Pro Seal on them, uh, especially doing the rear baffle, because we actually clicoed every single hole on the rear baffle just to pull that tight against the skin, let it sit there for a while before I riveted. And uh, then what I'll do is uh, you can see we've got two pans here is uh, as we pull the clicos out, they're full of Pro Seal. We'll just fill this up with acetone and let it soak for about an hour or so. And then they all wipe off very quickly. And you can see they they're back to normal nice and clean and they work very nicely anyway thanks for watching